Welcome back, everyone, as we continue our campaign on Ultimate General American Revolution. It is August 1775. If you haven't seen the campaign to this point, there's a link in the description that will take you back to the beginning. Our major threat right now is the British that have landed at Hartford. Uh, we have to deal with that, and or not at Hartford. They've landed at New Haven. Our army under Benedict Arnold is at Hartford, while a smaller force under myself is in Boston, hoping that Salem uh, and their garrison doesn't decide to attack. We're continuing to try to build our army up a little bit, uh, but we're going to have to take on the threat in New Haven. And once we've dealt with them, maybe then we can go after Fort Montgomery and kind of seal this part of the map. Uh, I'm hoping maybe we can draw him out and not take on his full force because I think he's got over 3,000 men there. Uh, my immediate concern right now is uh, recruiting additional officers so that we are able to continue to grow our existing forces. We've got these regular forces here, but all of them need more officers to fill out their ranks so that we can build this army up to something closer to 3,500 to 4,000. So let's do that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm sending one of my smaller regiments a little closer to New Haven I want to see what he's got there. Uh, once I get close enough, I can do that. I, I'm trying to save money right now, so I'm not spending money on intelligence to be able to see exactly what he's got. Unfortunately, looks like we're not able to get close enough. I guess maybe I'd have to send my general out to do that. So we'll pull Strauss back for now. We're hitting a big hole as far as finances go right now, though. All right, sending my general forward allows me to see. So there's 3,450 men in New Haven. Once we get these additional officers of low ranks, and I, I don't want to spend any more reputation right now because we don't want to get the reputation too low. If, if we had a disaster or something bad happened somewhere, I don't know why we're getting an issue from deserters because our salary should be high enough to where that's not an issue. That's a lot of additional funds that I can't really afford right now. Um, the desertion's hurting me right now, though. Uh, one of the things I'm doing, though, is I'm selling additional weapons. I've got a huge stockpile of civilian uh, muskets. So I sold some of those to get ourselves back on a, a positive footing here. We're 60 days away from being able to make United States muskets. So the plan at this point is uh, as soon as I can get these last four regiments maxed out and that will require me to get some more officers, then we will make our move on New Haven. We should have somewhere close to 4,000 men. I want to have at least a little bit of a numbers advantage before we go after them. Okay, so we can't wait forever. We're going to have to eventually make a move. And I think this is about as favorable a situation as we are likely to get for a while. So we're going to go ahead and pull everybody out of Hartford. I'm going to start forming them into brigades. Makes them a little more favorable when it comes to how they line up in the starting part of the battlefield. Because you don't get to choose your starting formation. Uh, you just get to kind of take them from where they are when it all starts. Uh, so the more I can join them ahead of time, the more united they will be in those starting formations. And it'll make our job a little bit easier. All right, we've got them merged into two brigades. Now let's march on New Haven. Okay, here we go. Very, very even. I'm not necessarily crazy about that, but we have very little choice in the matter. I've already issued hold orders on the left side. I'm going to do the same here on the right now. The hold order gives us a little more cover. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to Start preparing to slam into his flanks as he comes into my forces. And I 
hold some in the middle here as a support. We're going to start charging and try to turn that flank. I'm going to send more units over that way. Hold the center as best I can. I'm going to hold these units in reserve here. All right, I'm going to slow things down now. Hopefully we can start pushing this blue bar to the right. All right, now he's charging into me. Go ahead and send some support over that way. I'm actually going to bring General Arnold over here as well. Because this is where most of the action is happening. Dang, he's really hammering us here. Turn and face these guys, please. Alright, the blue bar has nudged just a hair, but not by much. has changed so far. All right, how are we doing on the left? We still have a reserve. We haven't sent them in yet. Who's Jay Stark, and why has he surrendered twice? That means he surrendered and then unsurrendered. Uh, this, this guy here. All right, we've got some reserves that can be reformed. We're gonna gonna merge some of these units together here. No, that one, those ones we can't merge. That's okay. He's got artillery back there somewhere too that I'm, of course, always massively concerned about. We're going to send these guys to turn around and deal with the threat behind them. Alright, that's how we're going to play it, huh? Well, I can send in more of my reserve over there. Come 
on, merge already, you two. Thank you. Let's get these two here merged. All right, he's recovering over here. Don't like that. All right, we can turn these guys back around now. All right, even though it doesn't appear like much has changed, I feel like we're gaining an advantage that we didn't have before. Finish these guys off. Who do we have back here? That's yeah, a unit that is going to retreat forever, it would seem. Come on, finish these guys off. Here he comes again to charge. I'm gonna move the artillery up a little bit. Having some trouble on our left flank right now, but everything else, I feel like we're in decent shape. really tired of these skirmishers, rangers, whatever they are, that I just can't seem to snap. There's so many casualties in the center over here. Now the left suddenly feels better than other parts of the battlefield. It's funny how quickly that can change. Just depends on what he's doing, which ones of his units are falling back and then recovering. I feel like we're starting to gain an edge, though. A lot of losses to deal with, though. Not crazy about that. Artillery starting to get low on ammo. Units are becoming more scattered. And more frail all the time. I'm hoping that he's going to give up the field before long here. And let us have New Haven back. All right, let's hit out the artillery. We finally pushed through the line to that part. 
Of course, this is where it can potentially get ugly as he fires that canister. Especially when he's got multiple lines of it like he does here. Alright, well, I forgot to record the very end of the battle. We did win. Both sides lost about 2,500 men. Uh, but I did manage to get him to flee the field finally uh, after having to lose a bunch of men. A lot of my casualties come at the end because he won't retreat. Uh, something I hope they fix with the mechanics of this game is uh, all the enemy infantry retreats, but then he leaves these massive artillery batteries. And in order to win the battle, you have to attack them, but then... Probably half my casualties for the whole battle came in attacking those batteries. Because they just hit me with massive casualties. I don't know why. We're dealing with some fog of war and kind of a f bit of a situation here where uh, looks like maybe everything froze up. So we might have to save and come back in. So we have completed the... Navy Department. We can go ahead and start working on some research there. So we'll do that. We're going to finish up the Artillery Department. That'll take 10 days. We're a month away from being able to make United States muskets. So that's good. Let's see if the situation has been resolved here. It looks like it has. So let's march into New Haven, retake it, and hopefully rebuild these forces back up. The main issue is whether or not I lost a lot of officers, because the recruits will be there if I have the officers to lead them. That's the main thing. Continental Congress appoints Benjamin Franklin as the first Postmaster General of the United Colonies, establish a foundation for a national postal system. Uh, I did start working on a ship, but of course the problem is I don't have the I really don't have the funds. For building ships right now so i think we'll hold off on that uh, there are market ships available that are better than anything we can build ourselves so that might be a consideration too i think we'll cancel that for now i'm also going to cancel working on any civilian muskets while we get our financial situation uh, squared away a little bit going to go out on a little scouting mission here while we're trying to save up for the officers we're going to need to rebuild our army in New Haven, I want to see what Fort Montgomery has. Because once we deal with that, then Hatfield becomes kind of the next place, and we start to solidify ourselves a little bit. He's got about 1,200 men as well. So uh, if we could get this army back to maybe 2,500 or so, we could assault Fort Montgomery and take it. We're about to get our next batch of officers. We'll see what New Haven's numbers look like after that. Up to 2,100 almost. I was hoping it would go a little higher than that, but I guess not. Uh, where do we go, want to go next here? We can um, raise some funds. We've got a little bit of money at the moment. Let's go ahead and finish our artillery department. It's got six days to go. Uh, almost done with equipment committee here. 15 days on U.S. muskets, and then hopefully we can start making some of those. I'll be curious to see how they compare to the other ones that we have. Um, still, it's officers. It's all about not having enough officers for these other units right now that's keeping us from being able to rebuild that army. Quartermaster Chief's ready for another project. Uh, we're really not in a position where we're building too much, though, right now, so none of this really helps me a lot. Uh, although some of these, like unit ammunition and union, unit provision, uh, those things, I think, will be helpful moving forward. So let's go ahead and do let's do material procurement for, for our next research. First fleet planning, 17 days away. Um, as soon as we finish artillery department, we're going to go ahead and do officers again. Though I think the 1,800 men here plus the 360 in Kent, uh, Kingston... I think that 2,000 men, oh, he's got 1630 now. He improved his number as well. Was not expecting that to happen. That changes things a bit. Okay, uh, more officers. 
I guess we'll hold off a little bit longer. Uh, let's go ahead and pick an artillery chief. Experience Bowden. Let's go with him. Starts with research speed. It's about the only thing we can do at the moment. Now we've got all of our departments. Uh, now the training level, uh, units located in settlements increase their training level daily, but it does cost us ammunition to do that. And I'm not sure how well we're doing on ammunition, so I don't know if I want to really do that yet. Well, here's a decision to make. Uh, the burning of Falmouth was an outrage exceeding in barbarity and cruelty. More than 400 buildings and houses are recorded as damaged or destroyed by fire. The people are left to fend for themselves for a winter in a town left with no lodging, eating, or housekeeping. The town of Falmouth formed a committee to raise funds for the distressed families. Uh, we all suffer in this war. That'll kill our support. But 5000 puts us in the hole, but I feel like we have no choice at the moment. Um, problem is now we're five days away from getting our new recruits and we're not going to be able to add those new recruits, our new officers, if we don't have the money. Uh, so next we're going to have to go back to raising funds again as commander in chief. Uh, and then we're going to start building those United States muskets. We do have, uh, we've only got 500 civilian muskets in storage, which means we're not even going to have enough guns to equip our soldiers, I'm afraid. Let's see what Fort Montgomery's up to now. Uh, they're up to 1,800. They're growing as fast as I am. Continental currency printed. Cool thing. My uh, ninth great-grandfather actually was one of the people who signed the continental currency. And I just got my hands on one of them. I uh, bought it on eBay. I found a good deal on it. Somebody sent me uh, a link about it. So I've got my first actual piece of paper that will have a signature of one of my distant ancestors on it and I'll have it on display here with my other memorabilia here very soon alright we're going to have to get ready to launch this attack on Fort Montgomery and then the plan after that once we consolidate all of that we'll go for Hatfield and Bennington and that'll basically build us a front line that runs from Fort Saratoga through Bennington and Hatfield over to Leicester and Boston and then, of course, the British will be up here. And then we can maybe start advancing up the Hudson River Valley with an eye on Montreal. We've still got a year or so to make that happen. Oh, you got to be kidding me. There's another British fleet coming with another invasion toward New Haven. Oh, my gosh, they want it bad, don't they? Where are they getting the men from? Because they're not taking them from somewhere else. They, they're just sending more men. Oh, this is brutal. So I'm going to have to pull back and defend New Haven. Fort Montgomery is going to have to be put on hold. And we're going to have to hope that this British invasion force that's coming is not as massive as our army. Oh, this is brutal. I'm so frustrated by this. All right, let's get them. Let's get them garrisoned. I'm guessing the British will be here soon. United States muskets are definitely more expensive than civilian muskets, but here's the big difference. Civilian muskets, which make up the majority of what my units have, do not have bayonets. United States muskets do. So even uh, so the the big difference there, you can see the rating of melee combat. Uh, and that's going to that's gonna be huge for us. So we're going to build as many of these as we can. Uh, of course, that also means that we're going to have to subsidize the factories again. There's only six that we've got. But if we subsidize those, we're going to be able oh, we're only gonna st still be able to make 26 of those per day. So it's going to take a good, gosh, a week or so just to outfit one company with those. So it's going to take a little while, but it will happen over time. I've been going back and forth. Those uh, decisions pop up every so often where we grab smugglers. And I said no to many of those opportunities to take money because that drives up the support among the people. Uh, but then that gives me the freedom to then occasionally say yes, and that'll drive the support back down a little bit. But our support's still pretty solid in most places. Here comes the British fleet, and there's five thousand men. Oh. 
Okay. We're going to stop right there because uh, that'll have to be for the next episode. I need some time to think about what I'm going to do. Let me know your thoughts. Should I stand and fight against 5,000 British regulars? Or do I pull my fleet out of New Haven with my 3,200 men uh, and try to build a force somewhere else? Maybe even let them have New Haven and march these guys up and maybe think about doing this another way. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think I should do? I've got just a little bit of time to make a decision. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.